Bird bird, remote learning with Mr. Sky. Remote learning, let's give it a shot. Remote learning with Mr. Sky. He's gonna teach you, gonna teach you a Hey, Brooks Scholars, welcome back to Remote Learning with me, Mr. Scott. How are you doing today? It's a little rainy today. I see that. Yes. Well, we've got a fun, fun lesson planned today. In fact, we're going to be reading all about M O N E Y. Money. 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 Let's talk about, let's talk about money. 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 Let's talk about, let's talk about money. So, money, that's the topic for today's lesson. Uh, but first, before we get started, we need to review your exit table yesterday. You will be all about the incredible Mr. David Beckham. Here are the answers. I hope you got them right. We have B, A, A, D, B, C. How'd you do? Did you get them all right? Yeah, yeah, most of them. Maybe missed one. Okay. Well, you got to make sure that you go back and find that evidence, okay? Very important. Lesson number two. Here we go. Lesson number two is all about stopping and thinking about what you are reading. Readers stop and think. Oh, yes, they stop and think. Just know they stop. And they think about what they are reading. It didn't rhyme. It didn't need to. Fine. I wanted it that way. So, Stopping and reading. The last thing that you want to be is a reading zombie. Reading zombie. Scott, what are you talking about? Well, a reading zombie is someone who is reading the words and they're looking at the pictures. But guess what? They're not actually thinking about what they're reading. Sounds a little something like this. Thinking it was like um, many young boys and girls grow up wanting to become a famous athlete. They had a a nice little picture of David Beckham. So, I mean, I, I read the words. You heard me read the words. I looked at this picture of David Beckham, but was I actually stopping and thinking about what I was learning from that? And if you're reading a fiction piece, you need to make sure that you're stopping and thinking about the characters and how they're trying to solve the problem, right? Okay, so we're going to practice that today. I'm going to be there with you all the way. It's going to be great. <clears throat> Stop and think. That's what we're doing. All right, so today, as you heard me say earlier, we are talking all about money. Grab your ELA packet, and you will need to turn to this page uh, right here. Got it, got it. Oh, too close, too close. Back it up, back it up, back it up. All right. <clears throat> now, here's a little game that we're going to be playing today. <clears throat> Wrong set of glasses. Got him. Oh, there you are. Oh, hey, you. Hey, how's it going? Nice to see you. Thanks for Dropping by the old uh, YouTube channel. Anyway, um, okay, so money is what we're dealing with today. We're going to learn all about money. I love money. Money's great, isn't it? You can spend money, go out, whatever I want. I want candy. I want games. I want video games. I'm going to get some food. I'm going to get some fries and spend all of this money. I probably shouldn't spend all of my money, though, because that's all the things that I need. That's all the things that I want, but not necessarily the things that I need, right? Like, I need food, and I need footwear that, you know, will keep out all of this horrible rain. And I need clothes, and I need to pay my bills. Have you paid your bills yet? Huh? Have you? Pay your bills, kids. What do you mean you don't have any bills? you have any bills to pay? Not one. You're telling me you don't have any bills that need paying. Are you serious? <laughs> Kid, you're lucky. Anyway, we got 15, 15, 15 questions that we're going to answer today about three different passages. Um, some of them having to do with money, and some of them not so much, but that's okay. Uh, we're going to be stopping and thinking. Each one of these questions is worth one dollar. 
one dollar. Okay, so there's a potential of fifteen dollars here. You got that, Miss Barquette? Yes, Mr. Scott. Great, Miss Barquette. Hang out right there. So at the end of this, I want you to count up how many you got correct, and then I want you to leave me a comment down there and tell me how many you got right. If you got fourteen or fifteen dollars dollars, then I am going to give you your very own personalized shout out in a following video. How does that sound? Oh, yeah. Get excited, kids. Here we go. Now, let's not forget the lesson that we learned yesterday all about genre. You need to stop and think. Look, we're stopping and thinking already. We haven't even started. We're stopping and thinking. Genre, fiction, nonfiction. When you start out reading a new text, you need to think to yourself, am I reading fiction? Is this about characters with a problem and a setting that they're going to try and solve? Or are you dealing with a nonfiction text, which, of course, will give you lots of lovely new information, for which you are really going to need to stop and think. Oh, yeah, I do this. I do this. I do this all the time. This is a short passage. This is not terribly long. But you know what? I'm 42 years old. I know. Let's just take a moment. Leave that hanging. 42 years old. Anyway, 42 years old. And even if I was reading this for the first time, I would want to stop and think about it as I read. Okay, so genre. If it's nonfiction or fiction. Now, I was reminded by the incredible Miss Hammond that we should do a little bit more work with, with genre, okay? So what we're going to do is we're actually going to make a note on the side of the text to say whether it's fiction or nonfiction. If it's nonfiction, we're going to do an NF. If it's fiction, yeah, it's an F. So we're going to write that down because I don't want you to forget what's happening in these lessons. Yesterday was all about genre. Today we're stopping and thinking. So let's dive right in and take a look at the topic sentence and see what it says. <clears throat> the bank clerk counted money each day. The bank clerk? What's a bank clerk? The clerk of the bank? Is there more than one clerk? How many clerks? Lots of clerks. The bank clerk. Clerk? Kirk, Kirk out. The bank clerk counted money each day. So what's happening here? Well, there's money involved. I also think there's a setting because it says the bank clerk. I'm wondering if that's someone who works at the bank, the bank clerk, the clerk of the bank. And uh, they're counting money each day. Well, that makes sense. If you're in a bank, you're going to be counting money, aren't you? So I'm thinking that this is probably going to, you know, I can't quite tell right now. I think this is one of those where it's going to be kind of fiction-y, non-fiction or non-fiction-y fiction, where it's, it's telling a story somewhat, but it's more importantly, it's giving you facts and information. So let's hold off on the genre until we read through it, and then we can really kind of think about what's going on. Okay. <clears throat> the bank clerk counted money each day. He helped customers who waited in line. He had to use all different forms of cash and coins. Some people had checks that needed to be... Uh, I messed up. Some people had checks they needed to deposit. Each customer was different. The clerk never knew what to expect. Working in a bank was like a juggling act. <laughs> juggling, juggling. I'm thinking clowns. I'm thinking circus. I'm thinking funny. But you know what? I don't know about juggling act. I'm thinking that this is actually, this person's quite busy. Time to stop. And think we're going to stop. And think we're going to stop. And think. Why do my hands look so big? So, okay, uh, the bank clerk, well, they're counting money each day. Now, let me think about all the things that this bank clerk was doing. Counting money each day, uh, help the customers getting into line, had to use different kinds of cash and coins, and then some people had checks. You know what checks are? It's like little pieces of like rectangular paper like this, right? And you uh, and you would uh, you'd, you'd write on the piece of paper, and then that would be like money. Yeah. Hashtag sports check. So I think this person is working extremely hard, this bank clerk. And when it says working in a bank is like a juggling act, ugh, I think that means that there are lots of responsibilities that come with having a job as a clerk in a bank. I'm going nonfiction. Can we do NF on this, please? Capital N, capital F, Dunskies. As always, I know that good readers are going to go back and they need to reread what they have written to make uh, reread what they've read, excuse me, to make sure they've understood it. I don't want to be a reading zombie. The bank clerk counted money each day. I'm really going to think about this. I'm hoping you'll think about it with me. Here we go. The bank clerk counted money each day. Hmm? 
He helped customers who waited in line. He had to use all different forms of cash and coins. Some people had checks they needed to deposit. Each customer was different. The clerk never knew what to expect. Ah! Poor clerk. Working in a bank was like a juggling act. Woo! Time to answer some questions. Grab hold of your pencil. Let's do this. Question number one. What is this text about? Um, well, it's definitely about a bank clerk, right? And that bank clerk has a lot of stuff that they need to do. They're pretty busy. Let's see if that can help us. It is about someone who robs a bank. Uh, no. No. Uh, no. Uh, no one's robbing a bank. No bank robbers here. <laughs> no, no bank robbers. B. It is about a clerk at an office. Hmm. I like clerk. I like that word. I like that part of it. It is about a clerk. True. If it stopped there, it'd be right. But it says at an office. Are we at an office, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Brooks scholars around the world? No. Not in an office. Bye-bye, B. What about C? Let's see what C has to tell us. It is about a bank clerk's job. Let's put an arrow, though, because as we know, we're not just going to mark off the first answer that we think is correct. We want to make sure that we're reading all of these options before we get to answering them. So, it is about banks around the world. Well, it is about banks, but it's not about different banks. It's about a bank, a bank, singular, one, a bank where this clerk has a job, working with money and people. Um, it is about banks around the world. No, I'm sorry. We're going to get rid of D, and the answer is C, of course. Go ahead and bubble that in. Make sure you bubble it really nicely, okay? We're going to fill in. Try to stay within the lines. Really, really leave a dark mark, as they say, hashtag Harry Potter. And now we're ready to move on to question number two. Whew. I tell you what, it was a good thing that we stopped and thought about what we were reading in order to answer these questions. Right? Am I right? Am I right? I'm right. right. Question two. What did the bank clerk do at his job? Well, what didn't they do? Let's go back and think about this. He helped customers using different types of cash and stuff. Uh, some people had checks they needed to deposit. Every customer was different. Never knew what to expect. It was like a juggling act. Okay. So those that helped customers use different cash and stuff and help people deposit. Let's see what the options are. The bank clerk did at his job. Well, they counted money. True. Helped customers in line. True. Used different forms of cash and coins. True. Well, hang on. I've got an arrow now by A, an arrow by C, and an arrow pointing to B, A, B, C, all arrowed. Oh, my goodness gravy. D, all of the above. D, all of the above. Of what? What does that mean? All of the above. All of the... Oh, oh, I get you. All right. All of the above meaning that the correct answer or answers to this job are, to this question, whoo, are A and B and C. A is true and answers the question completely. B is true and answers the question completely. C is true. It answers the question completely and correctly. So the answer is D, all of the above. How fun. All right, now let's get to shading that in. Do a really nice job shading in D. Oh, very good. Very good indeed. Ah! Right outside the line. Don't worry. Fix that. <laughs> oh, it's a masterpiece. Hang this in the museum. Number three, which two words from the text have the same vowel sound? Vowel sound. We talked about this yesterday, didn't we? Let's review the vowel sounds. A E I O U and A E E O R. <clears throat> We're looking for words that have the same vowel sounds within them. Here we go. Line I I I long I sound there. I blank E is the pattern. Just make a little note of that. Uh -huh. And need. E. I think they're both long vowel sounds. I, E, I, 
E-I-E-I-O. No, those are not the same sounds. Okay, what about this? What and was. Hmm. What, what, uh, 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 was. What and was, was what? What, what's, what, what, what? Hmm. I don't know about that. Bank and act. Oh, bank. But a a a and act. Ugh. And then each and coin. What do you think? Let's review them. Okay, we got line and need. We were pretty sure we didn't like that one. What about what and was? And then we've got bank and we've got act and we've got each and we've got coin. I think they're all wrong. I'm just going to mark them all wrong and go on to the next one. Or they're all right. What do we think? No. Usually. Most of the time with a multiple choice question, of course, you have one right answer, not two or three or four, unless, you know, it asks you to do that otherwise. So what is the answer? What and was? You got it. Let's move on to question four. Question number four says, what word has the same root word as needed? Well, when we know that we know that root words um, mean that they have the first part. We talked about this yesterday as well. Remember that? Um, we have the first few letters and they have a particular meaning. And then you can change the end of that word, but the root word must remain the same. Let's see. Needed is the same as needle. Ouch. Needs. Knee. <laughs> or Ned. Howdy, I'm Ned. Um, what do we think? Needle needs knee and Ned. Needle needs knee and Ned. Need, 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 need. It's a mouthful. It's a tongue twister right there. Needed, uh, well, it's not the same as needle. Needed and needing things is not the same as needle. I need a needle. No one needs a needle now. Needs, of course, has the same root word. Don't believe me? Look, it says N-E-E-D. N-E-E-D-E-D. -E -E -D -E -D. So needed and needs are the same. All right, let's put an arrow next to that. What about this next one? Knee, knee, your knee has nothing to do with needed. I didn't need a new knee, no. Ned, Ned! Um, no, Ned is not invited to this party. Sorry. Everyone say, bye Ned! <laughs> nice one. Question number five, last one, here we go. We're gonna, then we can leave this bank clerk in peace to run around and do all of their crazy stuff. What is the simile in this text? Simile, as we all know, simile, like, or as. You're comparing things. So let's see what we've got. Counted money each day. Never knew what to expect. Each customer was different. Working in a bank was like a juggling act. Go ahead and choose your answer. Go ahead. Oh, wait, it's fine. I'll give you some of that, you know, when you're, when you're on the, I'll give you some hold music, okay? What did you get? Did you answer it and say it was D? Because it had the word like and you're comparing working in a bank to juggling and having so many different things that you need to do at the same time, you're absolutely right. Congratulations. Give yourself a pat, pat, pat on the back, pat, pat for a job. Well done. Uh -huh. All right. Well, if you got all of those right, you know what to do. Give yourself a giant Mr. Scott smiley face. Look at all the work that's on there. Oh, beautiful hard work. Yes. Yes. Lovely. Lovely. All right, now, before we go on, it's time for some jokes. <laughs> I uh, took the liberty uh, in the beginning of the week to text some friends, and I was like, hey, I want to tell some jokes on my YouTube channel. I'm a YouTuber now. Uh, no, no flashback humor. Um, so um, I have I, I got a couple of texts here, and I wanted to read out the text to you. Um, I got some texts the other day from, um, oh, yeah, President Barack Obama. Uh-huh. What? No. It's, see? Psh, of course I know Barack. Kidding me? Anyway, this is, this is, these are a few of the jokes from, uh, from President Obama. This is what it says. Here we go. Why did the football coach go to the bank? I'm talking about 
football. You're talking about banks today. But why did the football coach go to the bank to get his quarterback? <laughs> quarterback, quarter, the coin getting it back or quarterback throwing the ball. Touchdown! Don't mention Brady. Good one, eh? All right. Well done, President Barack Obama. Let's see. What's this next one? What did the dollar name its daughter? You what? What's what? What did the dollar name its daughter? I don't know. What did the dollar name its daughter? Penny! Ah! Come on! So good. So good. Okay, the next one's a knock knock joke. Are you ready? All right, I'm going to ask. You're going to do the thing, you know, with a knock knock. Okay, here we go. Knock knock! Cash! Cash me if you can! Ah! Yeah. Jokes. He's a very funny guy, that from Mr. Barack Obama. I'll text him back later. Still owes me five bucks, by the way. Um, all right, well, now it's time to move on to our second text of the day. Da, 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 da. Uh, again, we're thinking about genre. Again, we're going to stop. And think we're going to stop. And think we're going to stop. And the, are you ready? Away we go. The topic sentence is very, very useful when you're reading a brand new text, can help you figure out what the genre is, and then you can get your brain all ready to do what the brain needs to do when you're reading something new. Sam's mom. Sam's, uh, that's an interesting way to start, isn't it? Okay. Sam's mom, okay. <laughs> Let's talk to Sam's mom. Oh, quick shout out to Miss Guerra. Bing. Uh, Sam's mom pulled out her credit card to pay for the groceries. Wow, okay, pay for the groceries. So already we've got Sam's mom, possibly also Sam. It sounds like they're buying groceries, so they're at a grocery store, and a credit card is being described here. This might be a fictional piece. Let's see. Now remember, if it is fiction, we're thinking about what the problem is, we're thinking about what the solution is, and possibly if someone learned something in this story, okay? Because we as the reader can learn the same lesson that is being taught by the author. Sam's mom pulled out her credit card to pay for the groceries. Mom, it's my Sam voice. I'll work on it a little bit more. Mom, why do you use a card to pay for things? Sam asked. His, his mom, oh, Sam was a boy. Well, that's okay, that's fine. His mom explained how a credit card works. She still pays money for their food, but she just puts charges on her credit card. Charges on the credit card. You're gonna have to help me with that one. We'll come back to that one a little later. Then she pays the credit card bill at the end of the month. This helps her stay on a budget. No idea what that is. It also means she does not have to carry money around. Now Sam understands that everything is bought with money, even if you use a credit card at a store. I'm lost. Um, I was with Sam and Sam's mom, and we were at the grocery store, and there was a credit card. And I thought maybe she was going to, like, pay for the – I don't know. It's This is really, really, really troubling. This is very troubling. I'm going to have to go back and read it again. Definitely. Okay, let's take this piece at a time, stopping and thinking the entire way through. Here we go. Sam's mom pulled out her credit card to pay for the groceries. Mom, why do you use a card to pay for things? Sam asked. His mom explained how a credit card works. Okay, there. That sentence, I think, is the most important of all. His mom explained how a credit card works. I think that might be what this paragraph is all about. I think it's less about um, Sam and mom and groceries. I think what we're actually supposed to learn from this here text is that you can have these things called credit cards. And credit cards are great and they're terrible at the same time. Don't worry, we'll learn all about that later. So um, let's see what it is. What does a credit card actually do? Park Sam and Sam's mom for a minute and let's see. She still pays for their food, but she just puts charges on her credit card. Charges. Charges. I'm guessing that's the amount that you have to pay in order to buy the groceries from the store. Right? That'll be $29.50, please. So you have to pay that money, but instead of giving over to cash, you give the credit card and they swipe it. Well, they don't swipe it anymore. They don't have a chip on it now, don't they? I'm not talking about Doritos. Anyway, they got the chip and then you put it inside the reader and then you go, well, no, 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 no. And then after that, you take out your credit card, you put it back in the 
wallet, right? But something happens electronically, something happens and somewhere a credit card company out there gets information that you've used your credit card. Let's keep going. Then she pays the credit card bill at the end of the month. Oh, okay. So the end of the month, so it's like you know, Saturday in the beginning of the month, and then keeps using the credit card and making all these charges, but then you have to actually pay that money back to the credit card company at the end of the month. Uh, this helps her stay on a budget. Stay on a budget. Stay budget. I think I've heard that before. It's kind of like the an amount of money, like the total amount of money that you have to spend on things, the amount of money that you need to spend and on the things that you want, the things that you need. If you're making any charitable donations, you know, that is also going to come out of that same budget. Woo! It also means that she does not have to carry money around. Oh, yeah. yeah. See, money is great, but I mean, there's tons of it, and it just kind of gets it. Look at this. Ah! All this money. So instead, you've got one card that you carry around with you, and you can use that to buy anything you want. Groovy. Now Sam understands that everything is bought with money, even if you use a credit card at the store. Mm, yeah, I think I kind of found that out the hard way the first time I got a credit card, that I have to actually pay that money back. Let's leave that story for another time, shall we? Okay, we stopped and we thought about it. We spent so much time understanding. I don't know how many minutes that was, but guess what? We've answered zero questions. Do you want to know why we've answered zero questions? Tough, I'm going to tell you anyway. We've answered zero questions because they had so much nonfiction information in here. And we really needed to think about what was going on, especially with the vocabulary. Credit card, budget, Sam. Okay, well, we knew that Sam was just a person. Um, but now we're ready. Yeah, let's do this. Let's do this. Number one, which title would tell a reader more about this text? Ooh. What was this about? It was all about Sam. No. It was all about Sam's mom. No. It was all about groceries. No. Then what was it about? What? You in the back. You all, no, no, not you. Sit down. No, behind. Yeah, you, you, stand up. You, yeah. Guy with the two ears and the thing. Um, what, what is it? Sir, you're gonna have to scream it. I can't hear you from back there. Yes, okay, it was about credit cards. Sit down. Credit cards. Let's see if credit cards is in one of these answers. I bet you it is. A. Sam's discussion. Ooh. I don't think that would be a good title for this. Because, yes, I get it. Sam was discussing the credit card with his mother. But it really, really doesn't matter because that's 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 nothing to do with credit cards. B. A lesson about credit cards. Woo! Could be that one. Budgeting cash. Cash? No. Now, I know that credit cards, now that I've done this reading, I know that credit cards are a form of cash. That is money, right? But no, it's not about budgeting cash. Or D, a trip to the store. If you thought it was a trip to the store, I'm not sure you were really thinking about this passage. X, D, now. Bye-bye, D. Um, yes, I'm with you guys. I really think that it has to be B. Bzz, bzz, bzz. Good, well done. Okay, so let's mosey on over to number two. Hi, number two, how are you? I'm good, 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 good. What is the setting of the text? Aha, this story took place somewhere. And we thought about it right in the beginning, right from that topic sentence. Okay, setting of the text. Is it in a bank? No, that was this one with the clerk. He's very busy. Give him a break, will you? Or does this take place in an airport? I actually really like answers like that because you know you can just get rid of them straight away. At the airport, really? If you thought I was at the airport, you didn't read this at all. A dinner table, nope. Or a grocery store, yes indeedy. Setting of the text, it took place in a grocery store. Of course it did. Number three, this is what it says. Which word in the text has the same first sound as the word change? <clears throat> change. Ch -ch -ch change is in a base. Change. Ch -ch -ch I'd play it for you, but I don't know the chords. Let's just leave that. But 
David Bowie forever. Which word in the text has the same first sound as the word change? The first sound, not ange, not that part, the first sound. All right, is it carry? Yeah. Is it charges? CH mm. says ch. What's the CH? Is there, there must be a CH wall card. What's the CH wall card? Chop, 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 chop. CH says ch, ch, chop, chop, ch, chicken. Ch, 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 CH says ch, chicken, chicken. No. Chop, chop, chambers. I don't know what it is. I forgot. Leave a comment down there if you know what the CH wall card is. I have no idea. It's completely, it's, it's escaped me. Anyway, as you've already probably figured it out, change is the same as charges. That has the same first sound. B, bubble it. Bubble, chicken, bubble, chicken, bubble, chicken, bubble. Yeah, that's an oldie but a goldie, isn't it? If you don't know Chicken Bubble, you should really go and watch that. It's available here on YouTube. Along with me, the ultimate champion. Question number four. What is a synonym? Oh, it's our old friend, the synonym. Back again. What is a synonym for budget? Mm -hmm. Two choices. Synonym either means the same or synonym means the complete polar opposite. Synonym means same, synonym mean opposite. Which one is it? Do you know? All right. Let's take a secret vote. Heads down. No, come on, put your head down. Seriously, put your head down now. Close your eyes. You're peeking. I saw that. Put your head down. Close your eyes. Okay, here we go. Secret silent vote. If you think synonym means words that have the same meaning, raise your hand now. Okay, hands down. And if you think synonym means words that have the opposite meaning, raise your hands down. Okay, hands down, heads up. Guess what? Synonym means the same. Yay! Synonyms, uh, large, enormous, huge, gigantic, all words that mean the same. So we don't have to be size words like that. It's just, you know, it's the first thing that came to mind. So, synonym. We're looking for a word that means the same. Let's see what we got here. What is a synonym for budget? Oh, that was like the amount of money that they had to spend with the... What, what was it again? Hang on. <laughs> then she... I'm just going to go back and reread. Because I'm an awesome reader. Better be first. Then she pays the credit card bill at the end of the month. This helps her stay on a budget. Oh, so the budget was like how much money they had to spend you know, based on how much money was coming in, I guess. It also means she does not have to carry money around with her. Well, whoop de doo for Sam's mommy. <clears throat> Helps her stay on a budget, so the amount of money that she can spend. Okay. Okay, synonym for budget. Does that mean charge? No. No, it don't. <clears throat> does that mean money plan? That's a perfect way to describe a budget. Money plan. A plan to do with what with your money. I've got this amount of money. This is what I'm going to do with it. All right. Go ahead and put an hour next to that one. What about quarter? A budget means quarter. No. Ah, same thing again for D. It means coin. No, it doesn't. We know the answer is B and bubble it right now, friends. Which brings us to the end of... The second passage. Question number five. Let's do this. Then and now. Then and now. Then. Then. Now. Now then. <laughs> <clears throat> then and now are words that tell the reader. Tell the reader. Then and now. Oh, now. Oh, because now. Oh, then. Look at this. Let's go. Look, do you see this? See this right here? The then and the now business right there. Can you see that? Is it coming into focus? It, oh, I've gone too close again. It's all right. Then and now, then here's how they are used in the text. Okay, it says, then she pays for the credit card bill at the end of the month. Now Sam understands that everything is bought with money, even if you use a credit card at the store. Store. 
buy some stuff. Then and now are words that tell the reader. What do they tell the reader? The importance of information presented in the text. Oh, the importance. Well, okay. I mean, certainly a lot of the information was was important here. Um, but then these are these are time words, aren't they? Time. Like that happened then, right? And this is happening now, right now. In fact, we're going live on YouTube. Everything's happening right now. Ah! So uh, time words that have to do with when things are happening. Uh, I went to the party then. Uh, I'm not going to the party now because it's raining and we're not allowed to go to the pool anymore. It's all sad. But anyway, let's get stuck in. The importance of information presented in the text. No, it was a very wordy answer and plus it's wrong. The order of events. The order. The time in which something happens. I'm putting an arrow next to B. To reread the sentence. Then and now. Then and now are words that tell the reader to reread the sentence. I don't even want to talk about it. I don't even want to discuss it. Just cross it off. No, nope, nope, not, not doing it. I don't care. Then and now are words that tell the reader the solution to the problem. I didn't say there was much of a problem in here. And you can use the words then and now in lots of different sentences and in lots of different texts. And they won't mean how you solve a problem. <laughs> Goodbye, D. The answer is B -b 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 -b. Oh, yes. Again, look at all that wonderful work that we put on the page. If you got those answers right, give yourself a giant Mr. Scott smiley face. Give yourself a high five. No. No. Yeah, no, I washed my hands before I went live on YouTube. I'm good. Give yourself a high five. Well done. Hey. I think it's about time for a dance break. Dance break, dance break, dance break. Please report to the living room for a dance break. Oh, hi, how's it going? These are my dance break helpers. And today we're gonna to be doing a new dance. Uh, and we hope you're gonna join us for this, okay? And all right, so we'll get the dance music. Music's always gonna be the same. Um, but we've got a new dance today, don't we? Yeah. That's it. Yeah. This is an exciting part of the, the whole show, okay? Let's try this again. Yeah. That was better. That was better, okay? And now, let's listen to Bill scream. Yeah. Fantastic. Over there for the dance party. Let's do this! Yeah. All right, are we all in the shot? Not really. Okay, there we go. That's better. Yeah. All right, okay, okay. Yes, that is money. We've been learning all about banks. Apparently, if you are a bank, Clerk, it's a really tough job. Okay, you ready? What is this one called? It's the frog hopper. It's like you're you're a frog and you have to. It's like a frog that's like running over like Can hot coals. Let's do this. Oh no! My speaker went out. Okay, ready? You gotta stick out your tongue in case you look like a frog. That's right. Yeah, get into it. Frog hopping. Hopping like a frog. I'm exhausted. Okay. Do the other one. Do, how's Bill's groovy dance? Come here. Yeah, yeah, do that one. All right, so you gotta bend your knees with this one. Punch your shoulders. You gotta kind of stick your mouth out like this. And then you gotta do this. Good. Okay. Yeah. Back to the frog hopper. Here we go. Incredible. Thank you both very much. We'll see you again tomorrow for more dance party. Get out of here. All right, back to now move it. Back to work. Whew. Frog hopping. Hopping with frogs. Okay. <clears throat> now then. All right, we've come to the third act, <laughs> if you will. Third. Okay, okay well, quick power nap. Way better. Thank you so much. All right, so let's see what's happening here. Uh, paragraph number three, the third and final text for today, it says here, <clears throat> uh, 
Sammy and Justin had been inside all day. Did, did you? Did, hopefully, alarm bells and red flags and sirens went off in your head, and you were like, "Fiction, fiction, fiction!" Right? I mean, Sammy and Justin, and they've been inside all day. It's the perfect start to a story. I'm thinking this is fiction. If it's fiction, I know I have to pay attention to the characters, to the setting, to the problem, and the solution. Let's check it out. Sammy and Justin had been inside all day. It was pouring rain outside. Soccer games were canceled. The two brothers were bored. So bored. Make something interesting, their mom told them. The boys thought about it. Think, 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 think. They decided to build a fort. Oh, that's an awesome idea. I want to build a fort. Have different like rooms in it, make it super comfy, have one room for like reading. I mean, the rooms are really, really small, right? Have like a snack room or something like that. Build a fort. Brilliant idea. Anywho, uh, they decided to build a, no, the boys thought about it. Thought, 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 thought. Uh, yes, uh, they decided to build a fort. It was so much fun to play inside. Oh, that's way better than what happened earlier. Remember? Let, let's talk about character feelings. Nothing more than, um, it started off and how were they feeling? Terribly sad, terribly bored, very, very upset. It's raining outside. I guess they like to go outside. I don't know. That's me just doing some things. You're welcome. And so now we know that this is what we're doing. So buckets of um, the ah, soccer games were canceled. The two brothers were bored. They decided to make a fort, and they had so much fun. Woohoo! Then the fort started to collapse. That can happen. Especially as you're like building it up and you get like the chairs involved and you try to hang the blanket on and then the blanket falls down and you try to do something else. It takes a lot of work building a fort now that I think about it. Anywho, uh, there were pillows and blankets everywhere. Let's clean up. We can work together, their mom said. Teamwork helps everyone carry a lighter load. It's a great line. Let's spend some more time with that one. <clears throat> Teamwork helps everyone carry a lighter load. Carry a lighter load. What do you think that means? If I'm carrying a load, carrying a heavy load, like, oh my gosh, this is so heavy. Oh, I can't carry this load. Someone comes along and they say, oh, I'll help you with that heavy load. And they take something. And now you're both carrying it. Oh, that's, that's much lighter. That's much better. Thank you. Thank you. Goodness. Thank you for helping me. Wow. You're a good person. Thank you. Um. <clears throat> Teamwork helps everyone carry a lighter load. So if lots of people are dealing with a single task and you break it down into different pieces, then the work that needs to be done is less for each of the individual members of that team. Teamwork makes the... <laughs> I'm going to read this again. It's fiction. Though I think there are some important life lessons that can be learned in this text. Sammy and Justin had been... <clears throat> Excuse me, little frog in the throat. Fr fr Boat there. Probably left over from the <clears throat> frog hopper dance. Sammy and Justin had been inside all day. It was pouring rain outside. Shh. Really unconvincing sound of rain. I apologize. Anyway, soccer games were canceled. No, I bet Sammy and Justin love soccer games. I wonder if they love soccer as much as David Beckham or Mr. Gilbert. The two brothers were bored. Make something interesting, they told, their mom told them. The boys thought about it. They decided to build a fort. It was so much fun to play inside. Then the fort started to collapse, and there were pillows and blankets everywhere. Let's clean up. We can work together. Their mom said, teamwork makes, nope, correction. Teamwork helps everyone carry a lighter load. I really like this story. It's a story about teamwork and helping one another and having a problem and then solving that problem, right? What was the problem? <clears throat> no, I didn't mean when I messed up saying teamwork makes and had to change it. That's not, I meant, what was the problem that Sammy and Justin had to deal with? Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. Bored because it's raining outside. They can't play soccer. So 
If that's the problem, what's the solution? How did it get solved? You're right. They built a fort, they had fun, and then they put it all away together. Good, 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 good. Let's get into these questions. Here we go. Mm. Which picture, picture, there's no picture. Which picture would tell a reader, hello, I'm a reader. Which picture would tell a reader more about this text? A picture, if there was a picture right there, like there was for David Beckham. If there was a picture here, which one would help me understand this story better? Okay, all right. Uh, a picture of a blanket fort. Well, there was a blanket fort in there. Let's put an arrow by it. Picture of a soccer ball. Well, now, wait a minute. It definitely mentioned soccer, but were the boys playing soccer? No. Was there a soccer ball involved in the games that they did play? No. Were they wearing awesome soccer jerseys like Mr. Scott was yesterday? I don't think so, people. Let's cross off. A picture of a pillow. Picture of a pillow. There were pillows involved, but this is more than just pillows. The pillow was part of the blanket fort, and the blanket fort was part of the, the, the solution, but I know this is not right. What about this one? A picture of two brothers. Ooh, that could be good, right? Sammy and Justin, they're brothers. They're the main characters in this story, along with mom as well. Hi, mom. Uh, but I don't think that that is really going to give us the information that we need. Now, if you're thinking about title, right? You think about title for fiction stories. Um, oh, sorry. You think about a picture. I'm sorry, a picture. I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, think about a picture. You want it to be something that is helping to describe and show either part of the problem or the solution. That would be really helpful. So in this case, a picture of a blanket fort. Why a picture of the blanket fort? Because that was the solution to the problem. They were sad then, uh, time words, and now they are ha ha happy. H-A-P-P-I, happy. Two, question two. Which title best fits the main idea of this text? I'm going to put a title to this story. Pillows and Blankets. Rainy Day Fun. Brothers. Clean Up. Which one is it? Go ahead. I'll wait. What's the answer? It's Rainy Day Fun. Rainy Day Fun is great because it tells you part of the problem. Rainy Day! Oh, why does my Mr. Grain for a thousand years? Fun. Rainy Day Fun. You've got the problem and you've got the solution. That's actually a really great title. Isn't it, Miss Parkett? No, but you, Mr. Scott. What is wrong with your voice, Miss Parkett? Three, question three. Which word is the root word in decided? Is it side? Is it decide? Is it dead? Or is it sided? Well, first of all, those last two are nonsense words, aren't they? They don't actually carry any meaning as a group or collection of letters together to make what would have been a word. D-E-D, -E -D, I don't think so. All right, so we've got it down to two. It's either side or it's decide. Now, remember the root word is the part of the word right in the beginning as a particular collection of letters. So, side, decided, it's got to be B. It's got to be B. It had to be B. I wandered around and tried to ask the question. Question number four. Which of these words mean the same thing? Ah, oh, what was that? Was that antonyms or was that synonyms? Yes, yes, we're going to keep doing this. Yeah, we did it earlier. We did it yesterday. I wonder what will happen tomorrow. You guessed it, boys and girls. We're going to continue to talk about synonyms and antonyms until we get it right. You're not leaving this YouTube. Never mind. Okay. Same thing. That was synonyms. Synonyms mean the same thing. Bored. And interesting. Oh, wow. That's so interesting. Two completely different words. Those do not mean the same thing whatsoever. What about this one? Load and fort. Load meaning some sort of object or collection of objects that you need to carry or a load of laundry, a load of old rubbish, really. And fort, they're totally different things. They don't mean the same thing at all. Bye-bye, B. C, inside. Outside. 
inside out. They couldn't mean that literally. That is the the opposite. The definition of the antonym there would be yeah, inside and outside. No, we're not doing that. That's that. And then finally, work together and teamwork. Huzzah! We found it. The extra blows. Bubble D, and we're done. And now, friends, we've come. We've come to the end. Come to the last question. Don't cry. You don't cry. You cry. I'm crying. We're not going to cry. We're going to get through this. Be brave. It's okay. A lighter load is an example of what do we think? Is it tone, metaphor, a theme, or a simile? Take some time with it. I'm going to read it again. What'd you get? What'd you get? What's the answer? Did you choose B? Because you're brilliant? Well done. Nice work. Huh. Wow. Well done, friends. Let's review. We know now that as readers, we need to stop and think. We need to stop and think. We need to stop and think about what we're supposed to learn. Well done, everybody. Teamwork. Goodness. You know that? Actually, reminds me of a song. It's one way to go out, actually. <laughs> See if you can spot this one. Check out my team. Thank you so much for joining me again, my friends. We'll be back here tomorrow. Looking forward to seeing you then. Keep reading. Keep washing your hands, right? Go and do three nice things and say three nice things to just three or more people. There's a lot of threes involved with this. I don't really know why. See you tomorrow, my friends. Stop it! Oh, there it is. I do. I am sure. Yes, I would like to end it.